Hey everybody, welcome to The Gold Life. My name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're gonna watch The Big Bang Theory to see how accurate the science and technology scenes in this TV show really are. I'm really having a lot of fun making these videos, and I hope you guys are really enjoying watching them. If there's anything more that you want me to like commentate over, anything you feel like would add to like the overall experience, just let me know and throw it in the comments. Like I'm totally willing to like work with you guys to see how I can make the viewing experience much better. All right, and with that, let's begin. You know who's got to be the bravest person in the Marvel Universe? Whoever has to give She-Hulk a bikini wax. You want to talk brave? How about Captain America's undocumented Mexican gardener? <laughs> He's not braver than whoever uses the bathroom after the thing. <laughs> I cannot tell you guys, like, how often these sort of conversations will come up. Like, I mean, not, not just for fun, but like, even at work. Like, there's, there has been so many hours wasted on, like, pointless discussions like this, and there's so much fun. I don't believe this is, like, an engineering thing, but it's a, it's more like, not every nerd is an engineer, but every engineer is a nerd. Yeah, I feel like that, that's, a, that's a fair equivalency, so, this is basically just that playing out, and, yeah, like, this, for fun, this is stuff that I would talk about with my friends all the time. I can't speak for all engineers, but, actually, yeah, I can. Because there's, it, this is like, engineering is like one of those professions that it it doesn't sound correct when someone else like generalizes all these things about what you do, but it's, it, we're pretty similar, like, between like me and just another engineer like in China or in India, like, we're not very different people. If you take like doctors, like doctors are really similar, but outside the hospital, they all have like their own lives, and they actually like will like behave differently outside of the office, but every engineer loves mechanical keyboards, <laughs> right? Like, there are just certain things that like, just like engineers have that they're all quirky, like we're all weird. And I think this is something that like really attracts us to these sort of conversations. It's always like, like intellectual like brain teasers. Like this stuff happens all the time. To science and friendship. <laughs> No, it's okay, go ahead. What? Oh, I was working with penicillin-resistant gonorrhea in a lab today, and I was just trying to remember if I washed my hands. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I, I definitely have a few friends who are biochemists, like they're getting their PhD right now, and they make jokes like this all the time, and yeah, they're not that funny. But it's definitely not like that. I mean, before you enter a lab and after you leave it, you are required to like, it's kind of, same thing like whenever a doctor goes into a surgery room, like you have to wash your hands to get into their like actual OR. Like you, you can't like not sterilize before working with his lab equipment. And you're also wearing gloves and you're also like, there are so many safety precautions like there so that you are not infected by the disease that you are actually working with as a biochemist or just biologists or like chemists in general. I don't actually know the statistics on people who contract the diseases which they work with all the time. I don't imagine to be very high because people want to continuously enter this field of study. But yeah, like jokes like this happen all the time. This is not a surprise at all. Hello, Hawaii. This is Dr. Kutrapali in Pasadena. I'd like you to reposition the telescope, please. Scarlett Johansson's house? <laughs> Yeah, you will get fired very fast if anyone ever saw you doing that. But for one, like, I don't know why, like, you would need to make a phone call to actually adjust the telescope anyway. Like, I mean, why can't you just remotely control it from his computer? I mean, there's like 50 computers just in that room. I'm sure one of them is able to, like, control that satellite. Or, sorry, not satellite, telescope. Even if, like, you weren't able to remotely control it, one thing you could do is just, like, kind of, like, send a message to someone who's operating it and say, hey, like, could you move it to these coordinates? I mean, you can't, like, the reason that you almost never want to make a phone call to, like, give, like, instructions like that is because then there's no record of it, and it, it's, it's one of those things that's, like, it doesn't, it sounds petty, but it's not. Like, whenever you're working with stuff like that, having that email, like, record, it's just so much easier to look back and say, like, okay, so this is what we did at this date, this is what we accomplished at that time, and it really helps you track all the information when you're working on, like, a much larger project that might take you years to accomplish. 
And whatever he's like actually collecting from that telescope, like why can't he just save it to a hard drive and then analyze it later? Like I don't actually understand why he's sitting there like right now staring through it to, to, to like find what? It's like like NASA has their telescopes on, like the Hubble one is on 24 seven, right? Like I, I don't understand why you can't just like view the images after they're saved into the hard drive. Raj, do you think this planet you're looking for could have an atmosphere that supports life? Maybe. If it did, I'd be famous. I'd be on the cover of magazines. And then, instead of living alone in my tiny apartment, I'd have a big mansion. I can't actually say whether he'll be famous or not, or if it was going to be on magazines, because it's... Like, so it's one thing to, like, discover, like, a planetary body or, like, a planet that can have an atmosphere that supports humans, but if you can't get there, I mean... Is it really useful that you found it? <laughs> like, we, we know all the planets within, like, our vicinity, and Mars is the one that we're already looking towards to actually start to, co co to colonize and to, like, terraform. So if Raj was to find a planet that could, like, sustain humans, but it's, like, you know, light years away, I mean, like, there's, like, what chance do we have of, like, getting any sort of population over there? Your value as a physicist or an astrophysicist or, like, any sort of scientist is as high as what you have provided to the knowledge of science. If you've found a bunch of things, but you can't actually act upon those, like, it's fun to, like, you know, just have, like, stars named after yourself, but what are you gonna do with them? So if Raj was able to find a way to, like, terraform Mars, I mean, oh my gosh, he will be, like, an like instant billionaire, holy crap. But in terms of, like, if you say, okay, I found a, like, asteroid, or I've identified a comet that will, like, pass by the Earth every 40 years. Like, yeah, you'll get, like, your five seconds of fame, but it's not as if you're really gonna, like, you know, further the knowledge of science, or you're not actually contributing a whole lot to stuff that people can actually work on. This was one of those episodes where they focus more on like the relationship between like scientists and just friends in general rather than the actual science being done itself. So to, to those angry people in the comments, like chill. <laughs> it's okay, sometimes we can just watch an episode of Big Bang Theory and actually just enjoy it for what it is because like when you actually have people who are collaborating on information, like their relationship is important. I mean, look at the history of scientists like Watson and Crick and then um, like Einstein and his like, I mean, Edison and the people that he was working with. The people you have working around you are very important. So if you have a friendly relationship with them, it actually will help you like research and it'll help your work a lot more. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay fresh and stay golden.